Nowadays, it's common to see furnaces and hot water tanks placed inside a garage or a storage room attached to a garage um, or just kind of open and visible in the garage. Um, seems to be typical, at least where I'm at. I see that in designs of new houses all the time. And with that come some requirements um, as far as anchorage, um, impact protection, and the ignition source um, for gas appliances. They want that ignition source to be a little higher um, when you're dealing with combustibles and garages. They just want to make sure that there's some separation there. And uh, so I'm going to run through all that. I'll dive through the code here a little bit, and then we'll look at some pictures. So you kind of have an idea what I'm talking about. Nothing crazy, but it's just something that you need to know if you are swapping out your furnace or your hot water tank, um, what you might need to do or what you should do um, just to make sure that it's safe and uh, will pass any inspections that you might be calling for. So here would be appliance installation, and here we're talking about anchorage, right? So most of this video and this code deals mostly with hot water tanks, especially gas hot water tanks placed in a garage. Um, you're going to run into this maybe with the furnace, um, but for the most part, when it comes to anchorage on a furnace, the duct work and everything is going to keep it all secure. You're not necessarily going to need to strap it or put anything on it. Um, to keep it from moving around. You may, um, but mostly we're dealing with hot water tanks. Um, so it says appliances designed to be fixed in position shall be fastened or anchored in an approved manner. Um, so that's usually just, you know, some type of strap. And I'll show you a diagram here in a minute um, that kind of shows the strapping and what they're looking for. Um, here it says in seismic design categories D and um, and in townhouses and seismic design category C. So you'd have to figure out what seismic zone you're in, which I'm sure you could just Google um, and say, you know, or you would just, you know, common sense might kick in and say, well, if I live in, if I live in California, I'm in a high risk area versus, you know, if I live in Minnesota, maybe I don't have those, uh, those earthquake issues and it's not a big deal. Um, when it comes to hot water tanks, you know, I've always been like, you know, if a hot water tank falls down, then you probably have bigger problems than worrying about the hot water tank. But if it's a gas hot water tank, you know, and you break a gas line because it falls over for some reason, that could be a pretty big safety hazard. So they want to make sure that everything's anchored. Um, if nothing else, I would take like some plumber's tape or some type of strap and just anchor it into the studs on either side of it and make sure that it's secure in case something was to ever happen. But here they're saying just design cat or seismic design categories D and C. Now where I'm at, we work under the UPC, the Uniform Plumbing Code. And so sometimes um, the IRC, the mechanical component of the IRC, and the UPC butt heads a little bit. Um, in the UPC, it doesn't necessarily say uh, seismic design categories. It just says anchor the hot water tank. Um, so that's what we do. Um, it goes above and beyond just townhouses. We are in seismic uh, design category C, but we call it for everything. And uh, some uh, contractors don't like dealing with it, but it's just part of it. And they put some straps on their hot water tanks. Um, anchorage and strapping shall be designed to resist a horizontal force equal to one third of the operating weight. Again, you know, if you're strapping it off pretty good, I don't, most people aren't going to get into the specifics on it. They just want to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Um, it says at the lower point, because you're going to want the strapping to be at points within the upper one third and the lower one third. At the lower point, the strapping shall maintain a minimum distance of four inches above the controls. So especially in a gas hot water tank, you're going to have all your controls down there at the bottom to make your adjustments on your temperatures. They want that strap to be uh, a minimum of four inches above that. And then it just says the anchored strap shall be in accordance with the manufacturer's installation instructions, right? So look at your installation instructions. They're going to tell you where to put them um, and just make sure you follow it that way. Uh, let's hop over to um, code on anchorage and ignition protection. So first, we have protection from impact. Appliances shall not be installed in a location subject to vehicle damage except where protected by approved barriers. 
So it, that means just that. If your uh, furnace or your um, hot water tank is in a position where if you accidentally hit the gas in your garage, you would not hit it. There would be something there to protect it. So you're not hitting those gas appliances and causing more safety uh, concerns within your house or to yourself or anybody around you. And so just keep that in mind. Where we're at, um, an enclosed um, space. So maybe it's just this little cubby that has all of your uh, your furnace and your hot water tank and it's been framed off and it's got some doors on it's enclosed where we're at we accept that as vehicle protection now where you're at they might want that and a bollard um, they want might just say just a bollard um, you'd have to check to see what is required to meet that um, impact safety requirement um, and then they jump into the ignition source so it's talking about gas appliances and so usually like the ignition source on a hot water tank is in the bottom, right? It's going to, it's going to fire up and it's going to burn up and, and heat the bottom and heat all your hot water on a furnace. Usually, um, the burner, depending on if the furnace is turned sideways or how it's set, the actual ignition source is usually already 18 inches above the ground. So when it comes to ignition sources, Furnaces usually aren't an issue. It's the hot water tank that usually has to be elevated and put on a stand. It says appliances having an ignition source shall be elevated such that the source of ignition is not less than 18 inches above the floor in garages. So for the purpose of this section, rooms or spaces that are not part of the living space of a dwelling unit and that communicate with a private garage through opening shall be considered to be part of the garage. So if it is a, um, a side door, it's a side mechanical room, a side storage room, but your mechanical uh, stuff is in there and it communicates with it, it's going to be considered um, part of that garage and it would need to be elevated or at least that make sure your ignition sources are 18 inches above the floor. The one exception is elevation of ignition source is not required for appliances that are listed as flammable vapor ignition resistant. You may end up getting a, a, a high efficiency hot water tank that has that protection in it, and then you don't have to put it on a stand. Um, but let's look at some pictures and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So here would be a furnace <clears throat> that is elevated off the floor, but the ignition source is already 18 inches above. This is a new house. They haven't poured the floor yet. I don't know what they're going to do for their impact protection, but they are going to have to protect this from impact. So whether or not this whole thing then gets framed in at a later date or they put a bollard right here, they would need to protect it. It's in a garage and if a vehicle was to run into it, it could cause some, some pretty big damage. Um, we might hop over to here. So here you can see, so here's a hot water tank. It's been strapped. Okay, about four inches above the ignition or above the controls. Okay, it's strapped in the middle thirds. It's got its stand so that the ignition source is 18 inches above, above the floor. And it's got a bollard. So here's your bollard, your impact protection. Where we're at, the number is kind of about four feet because a lot of people call and they're like, well, where do I set this thing? Usually it's from the from the wall, you measure four feet, and then it's every four feet after that, right? So you might need a couple of them if everything's spread out. But I would just let, you know, kind of, you know, just generally look at it and say, if I was going to hit the gas, and I was going to hit this thing, am I going to be able to protect my, uh, my equipment? You know, and I mean, you might say, well, and what if the car just hit right here? Well, if you have a two bay garage, you know, normally you're going to park a car here and you're going to park a car here. Well, if the car that's right in front was to go forward, it would probably hit this before it would hit these. And that would be the idea. Um, so that would follow impact protection, ignition source, and anchorage. Let's see if we have a couple more examples here. It's kind of blurry, but you can see here's a bollard. Now you can see that this bollard right here, your strapping, if you can see it, here's your stand. The ignition source is already 18 inches. Um, but this bollard, and then if we go back to that other one, you can see that they are um, anchored. 
Okay, so you can go and you can put wedge anchors or some type of uh, connection bolt into the concrete to hold it and meet that requirement. Um, but you can also uh, preset it down in through your concrete which is actually ideal. It's a lot stronger than maybe just putting some anchors in it. And that would be something more like this. And this one isn't the most pretty, but you can definitely tell that they either bored a hole or before they poured their concrete slab, they set this bollard, they poured their slab, and then they filled it full of concrete. I mean, that thing is gonna be pretty strong. So if you're building a new house or you're redoing your garage, maybe you're building a new garage, you're moving all of your equipment out there, it might be a good idea to go down to your metal fab shop and get yourself a six or seven foot long uh, steel tube and drop it in the ground. Make sure it's at least three feet above the ground. And so that's why if you get a six foot one or a seven foot one, you can put like three feet in the ground and three feet out. And then you know you're covered, fill it full of concrete, and that thing should hold a pretty strong impact. And then um, I told you I'd show you a diagram that I found. Kind of pull it all together a little bit. So here would be your protection of your bollards, right? Here would be uh, elevate so that the burners are 18 inches minimum, unless it's specially approved to be ignition resistant. Um, straps minimum four inch above the gas valve, right? And then within thirds. Um, so in a nutshell, that covers, you know, Anchorage that covers impact, it covers the ignition source, which deals mostly with hot water tanks and especially gas hot water tanks. You may run into this stuff with furnaces. The only other appliance I can think of out there that would have um, kind of fall into one of these categories would be maybe your range in your house and an anti tip bracket, which would fall into Anchorage. And that just comes into play. The anti tip bracket's going to come with the range if you buy a new one. And it's just there to protect if, you know, if a, a little kid opens the door, they get on the door, they don't want it tipping, um, especially if there's hot water, boiling water, it's on. Um, or if you get kids that like to crawl across the countertop, uh, you don't want them on the very edge and having it rocking on them. So um, just another little thing to think about. I know a lot of people don't like putting those anti-tips in because if they're not in the right spot, then it's hard to slide in there. Uh, but that's why they're there. So. That should cover um, anchorage, impact protection, and ignition sources. And uh, hopefully that helps you out and uh, kind of gets you all the little uh, information you need to keep moving and keep your project going and get done right. <laughs>